this time, folks, I promise it'll be good. Welcome back everyone. Today I'll be showing you how to paint the Lannister Guard Captain. So basically it's a little bit of a rerun of the Guardsman, but you want to just put in that extra effort in getting beautiful smooth blends and uh, getting those really, uh, well let's just say improved facial details uh, picked out. So the first step, of course, is uh, to pick out those base colors. You can instead do the whole model, but I like to kind of do things one at a time and then just work through, you know, getting those, uh, getting those individual pieces done. And so, you know, doing all the metals and the, uh, you know, highlighting and darkening the metals. And of course, you know, moving on to the coat, the sigils, the face, all of that. So you can see I have a little bit of a different process from other people, but take from this what you will. And uh, you can see I've already jumped right in. So I've put on the base coat of black. I don't intend to highlight it because I'm letting the um, uh, kind of the deeper iron color. It's uh, similar to lead belcher. It's called pig iron from P3. Uh, they're a paint company, of course. But you can see it's it's kind of looking more of a silver color compared to the, the, the pure black that I'm using. And it is going to be a little messy, but you definitely don't want the silver on the black or the black on the, uh, you know, uh, metal areas. So all you have to do is just kind of be careful where you place it. And of course, you can always just clean up after. Uh, now for washing the metals, I'm just going to be focusing mainly on the shield area. And the sword, of course, because those are basically the only areas of, of basically non-highlight. So, you can see I'm just dragging my black wash uh, from the tip down to the hilt of the blade. And you can see it has this nice transition. Uh, quite similar to what we did before, but this time you just really want to focus. Getting a very nice and smooth blend. Uh, now I'm just picking out a few details. Um, I believe I only really did the uh, sword hilt and uh, part of the cross guard, and those would be those I'm picking out with the the nice brass color, which of then of course you can leave kind of bare. But because there's actually some quite nice like lion face details in it, you do uh, I do recommend maybe putting on like a, a gentler flesh wash just to kind of. Um, add a, a little uh, variety in tones to be able to see those those nice little details on the sword there. Now the plume itself, oops, sorry about that. The plume itself is actually quite humongous. It's uh, maybe twice as, as large as the regular uh, unit, so you really want to do a great job on this. And so that comes down simply to you know, getting that nice red base coat on and then picking out those details. There isn't much texture on the front, but what you can do is use your highlight tone and just kind of draw tiny little lines across and kind of have a nice feathery looking texture, right? Because feathers aren't just sheets of, 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 of solid, you know, material. There are a bunch of little fibers sticking out. So uh, you can try and replicate that if you'd like. Now I'm just uh, simply picking out the other details using the same uh, red base color that I used with my uh, other guardsmen. I felt that their uniform should match, of course, so that's what I'm doing. I'm using a Vallejo's Vermilion for that. And now for uh, the all the blending that uh, you'll see eventually, I'm going to be just brightening uh, that up, uh, that base red up like you see here. Uh, with a little white and then I'm using a darker uh, kind of crimson uh, little uh, maroon color 
and I'm just going to be blending those three tones to get a nice a set of nice transition across the a coat there and on the back and um, also those uh, puff elements uh, below the sh uh, shoulder uh, plates I'll be um, put, putting the interior as that lighter color and the out exterior as a darker color that's just uh, kind of my personal preference and I was pretty happy how it turned out but you can switch it you could do whatever colors you like maybe even make the whole model black just do a set of blacks and metals and grays if you'd like but uh you know it's a guard captain and he's kind of a source of terror but he's also you know a proud Lannister still so I think this captures uh, all of those elements pretty well by uh, doing all the picking out these colors I like but uh, you can choose differently of course uh, for the techniques uh, when it comes to painting the uh, uh, legs and that kind of inner shirt uh, between the the two coat legs it's the same exact thing as on the uh, Lannister Guardsman just using that uh, darkened down uh, red color you know that, that crimson and then uh, using that pure crimson uh, kind of dark color for the front between the two legs Now we're on the front and shield sigil. Uh, so basically it's just adding that kind of mid bright yellow tone and just passing by with uh, some brighter yellow tones uh, to get that, that nice, uh, you know, Lannister lion uh, looking pretty uh, snappy. <laughs> but you could, you could uh, change up the detail, you know, maybe add brass because it is plated in, you know, it's a part of the metal detail itself. I felt like, you know, they, they painted metal plenty of times, you know, in the medieval era, from what I understand. Um, so, take into account as well that if you did it differently on your guardsmen, that it might affect uh, the cohesiveness of your paint scheme negatively, because your details will be different, which um, isn't always a good thing, especially when you want a uniform-looking um, army. The leather also doesn't change as well. It's just simply applying uh, 
whatever leather color you picked out uh, across the different uh, parts of the model. There's the belt in the front, the straps on the back of the breastplate, uh, the little satchel, the um, sword sheath, uh, the gloves as well, or you could have uh, bare hands. Kind of depends on what you prefer, but uh, just don't forget to do those details there. Now at this point you may be wondering, why the heck does it look so different? That's because I forgot to actually do the uh, leather wash, so don't be like me. When you're working on the leather, let it dry, and then put the leather, leather wash on. Don't do it when you're halfway through basing it, because it's just a bit of a headache. And you want to keep the headaches when in terms of miniature painting to a minimum. I'm also being quite careful on the trim. Uh, he has a very nice kind of double layered um, uh, trim around the coat. It's much finer than on the guardsman. Uh, so make sure that you don't um, get the yellow between the lines or around or whatever, anything like that, because you wanna make sure it looks very nice and clean. I uh, know one of the last steps is the face. Um, I kept the uh, hands in gloves because I thought that would be kind of a nice touch. Um, you know, if he's not he's not really one to get his hands dirty, I feel. That's also part of the, I think, Lannister kind of charm. So uh, I'm kind of leaving the, the skin purely on the face. <clears throat> Pardon me. So you can see the facial details are quite a bit sharper than the line infantry, which is a bit of a shame. It would have been nice if they were all sharp, but a little off topic there. Um, so I'm using Bugman's Glow for the base, then having kind of a mid-tone on top of that. And then I'm uh, washing that down to get all those n nice details out. And then I'll highlight from the mid-tone brighter and brighter until I get like a kind of... Uh, a pinkish brownish white you know not pure pure white not like an off-white but more of a just a pretty bright uh, skin tone but first off I uh, chose to paint the eyes so you can see I'm just um, using uh, well maybe not as off-white as I should have but definitely go for an off-white and uh, pick out those eye details then go for like a dark gray maybe a deep brown or something like that for the pupils. So you can see yeah, I got it a little messy, but you can always just wipe that off um, before it's dry. And, or just, you know, paint over with that mid-tone. <clears throat> and then what you wanna do is get uh, that not, uh, get a very, very sharp, fine brush like I have here. It doesn't have to be expensive necessarily, but maybe just, um, get like a cheap uh, brush that you only use maybe for those very fine details, just so you can use like a super fine tip like I'm doing here. So what I did, took that kind of semi dried out um, paint from outside the dropper bottle, um, and I used that to uh, pick out the eyes. Uh, you can see he does look a little crazy, but um, from the, the lore, of the and the rules he murders his own men to make sure they don't run away
you can see as I said before I'm just getting brighter and brighter details focus definitely on the chin the cheekbones and the nose for the mouth you can just kind of leave a bugman's glow there because like it'll be a nice kind of darker fleshy tone um, especially if you don't paint on it then you have that nice washed out you have the wash as well which will darken even for, darken it even further and then on the um, in the mouth that is there actually a little bit of teeth so what you can do is take a, a nice off-white and just hit those teeth a little bit just to uh, at least suggest that there's a bit of uh, detail there For the final stages, I'm pretty happy with everything. And now it's just um, reinforcing those details, like I got a little bit of skin tone on the uh, metal areas. Um, I'm just, you know, sh adding, you know, extra detail. Uh, I forgot to paint the uh, back straps there, but don't worry, I picked them out eventually. That's always uh, something I have to do. Don't forget these details, because you don't want to show up at the store and be like oh wait have to have to do that later you know make sure you uh pick out those details the first time around or you know watch a video like uh, me and say oh yeah i'll make sure i don't forget to do it like he did so you know keep that in mind there you have it if you like this video you can check out my lannister guardsman if you haven't already done so I'm putting a basing video up as well, and uh, the Sworn Swords will be coming next, as well as all the characters and everything else. Uh, my, I have a Shapeway, so if you want to check that out and maybe download something, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, let me know if you uh, have anything you want me to design, I'll be happy to do it for free, and uh, post a, uh, the files for you to download and uh, print if you'd like. Uh, stay tuned for the next video and hopefully I'll see you next time.